Rose City. Brian Voss, the heartthrob of the PBA, hopes to increase his nine-year championship streak to a decade of winning. ESPN and the Professional Bowlers Association present the championship round finals of the Oregon Open. from Portland, Oregon, the Rose City. Here are your five finalists for tonight's championship round of the PBA Oregon Open. Our fifth seed in his sixth season on tour is making his first TV appearance, Tommy Deleuze. His opponent in match one has the best TV winning percentage in PBA history, Danny Wiseman. The winner of that match faces one of the tour's most powerful players and last year's Waker State 250 champion, Bob Spaulding. The semifinal match features a PBA Hall of Famer who has won titles in each of the last nine years, Brian Vaughn. And bowling from the top spot for the first time in his career, going for his first title, Dave Watka. Now to Mike Canoro. Thank you, Dave. And that young lady just presenting those roses to Cindy Crawford, Mrs. Portland. And that's where we are, Portland, Oregon, the city of roses. And Earl, on our telecast tonight, we have some inexperience in the one, three, and five spots. Well, some inexperience, Mike, but not all that much in the middle. On the bottom, Tommy DeLewis, this is his first time on television. So he's inexperienced. We really don't know what to expect from him. The guy's got a lot of talent. This could be his day. You never know. In the number three position, Bob Spaulding, a one-time champion. He's been here before. He's been under fire. He's performed well. I expect him to be tough to beat tonight. Our tournament leader, on the other hand, has something to prove. He wants to beat his mom. His mother, Kathy, has already won before. David Watka, on the, on the, on the other hand, has never won before, so he wants to win that one title and catch mom. Right after Valentine's Day, he catches mom, huh? In our number two and four positions, though, we have a lot of experience, a Hall of Famer, and a guy who has the best record on TV in PBA history. It's an incredible record. Danny Weissman, the player in fourth position, is 6-0 and in title matches. He's never, never lost a championship match. Not only that, but he's 21-6 and overall, 21-5 and overall, on a t as a, for a television record, which is just phenomenal. This is a PBA record. No one has ever even come close to being this successful on the national tour before. Danny Weissman, a hard player to beat. He loves to bowl on television. Very talented. The guy he's got to get by, though, if he's going to get to that championship match, the man waiting for him is Hall of Famer Brian Voss. 15-time PBA champion. He's won a tournament, at least one tournament, over the last nine years, trying to go for the record. If he can get to 10, he could have a chance to continue on. Now we're looking for that first match to get underway very shortly. We'll be right back with you. Here we go. And there they are. Danny Wiseman on the left. Tommy DeLutes on the right. Tommy DeLutes a little nervous making his first shot ever on national television. And uh, we're bowling on lanes 33 and 34 here at the Hollywood Bowl in Oregon, Portland, Oregon. I'm Mike Durbin. Working with me tonight is the ABC and PBA Hall of Famer, Earl Anthony. Earl, Tommy's first shot. Welcome to the telecast. Solid 10 right away. We've seen a lot of those. Last night in match play, it just seemed like every other shot was at solid 10 pin. The players are finding that the lanes are hooking a lot. They need a lot of ball speed to get it down the lane. And talking to Tommy DeLutes, his key to success was a lot of loft. He wants to get the ball well out on the lane in the air. Well, he has that first spare, so he's breathing a little bit easier. Didn't start off right with it open. Danny Wiseman, the guy who has mastered television in his bowling career. Very, Whoa. very uncharacteristic shot from Danny Weissman. Normally, he's a pocket pounder and uh, he shoots big scores on television. He's one of those kind of guys that can shoot 250 at any given time. This one just got away from him a little bit. We'll take a look at the style of Danny Weissman. Very free and easy arm swing. Watch how he gets the ball out away from the side, opens the wrist, brings it back underneath, 
good long slide and one of the few players that's successful by sliding at the point of release. Tries for the double, breaks out the 4-9, leaving only the 4-pin. Has such a stance so far back to take four steps. It's incredible how long its slide is, and it can still maintain balance and get leverage into the shot and release the ball while he's still sliding. That's uh, the only other guy I've ever seen that was really very, real successful doing that was Marshall Holman, the Hall of Famer also. From this part of the country. Maybe that's where it starts. You've got to be able to slide up here in the Northwest, right? Well. Well, Tommy's even after uh, Danny starts with a strike spare. Very impressive style, very impressive game this young man's got. Look, see how calm and steady his head is here. He gets through the shot very strong. A lot of back end, but that's just too much room. Never had a chance there. The one, two, eight, ten. Kind of fell off to the right a little bit there. Changes balls to shoot this spare. The idea here, of course, is get the ball on the left side of the head pin. Knock it into the 10. The ball will take out the 2 and the 8. Has a chance. Oh, just hit the head pin a little bit too thin. It looked good, pretty good going down there. Here's another look at the style of Tommy Deloots. Very classic style. Very strong young player. See how he gets the ball. He opens the shoulders. Watch him square him up at the foul line right there and get it through. The, the important thing is to square him up perfectly in time at the foul line. If you don't, the ball is going to be offline. All right. Nice shot on lane 33. If Danny Weisman gets it going like he usually does, uh, we've seen him do it in the past, Mike, you and I both. If he gets it going, uh, if he wins his first game, he's going to be hard to stop. He's like a freight train going down the tracks. Boy, you just can't stop this guy once he starts winning. He's got back-to-back. -back. Maybe he figures a good thing uh, he's not going to change it. Well, watching the bowlers warm up and talking to him, they said the right-hand lane was definitely hooking more than the left. And we're going to take a look at what happens when you hit high Brooklyn here. Almost a jersey squasher, but not quite. More like a left-hander trip in the six-pin. Well, you did that a few times. Yeah, I did that a few times. Here's another. Watch the pin action. See the head pin go to the side, come back, and kick out the six and the ten. In fact, ten. I remember seeing a few shots like that over the years. Yes. For the double. And has it. Danny Wiseman taking advantage of that Brooklyn strike. So after three and a half frames here, Danny Wiseman has a 25-pin lead. Tommy Dilutes, he's working on a strike. We'll be back to see if he can double up after this. More relief than the regular strength of Bayer or Tylenol. Addison, when you really got a headache. The new reloadable smart card. The future is happening now down under and on its way here from MasterCard. It's smart money. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think? Original and cooling blue. By men and... The Oregon Open from the City of Roses is brought to you by Anison. Works on your headache so you can work better. And by MasterCard. MasterCard, it's smart money. And Tommy Dilutes up on lane 34 trying for a double to stay pace and really gives him room. Trying to swing it on the lane that's hooking more and just <laughs> over, over uh, estimating what it's going to come back here. Here's another look at that shot, and watch how far out it gets it. Out near the channel, almost, almost a tilt, Mike. Almost hooked one in the air, but not quite. And leaves the one, two, four. Changes balls again. Oh, got it. So he has the spare. 
Tommy looks a little fired up, like the adrenaline's going pretty good right now, and maybe he's overthrowing the ball. He's thinking loft and maybe just overthrowing rather than being under control. He needs to calm down a little bit and get back into this match before Danny Wiseman puts him away. Well, the one good thing is that Danny Wiseman certainly is not uh, locked in on the right lane either. Doesn't matter. He's got the double. <laughs> That's the key. Well, both players uh, having no trouble with lane 33. Danny Wiseman, who's 28 years of age, from Baltimore, Maryland. He has uh, six national titles. And he bowled the only 300 game of the tournament this week, which is uh, kind of unique. Normally there are several 300 games, as you know, in each uh, PBA event, Mike, and uh, only one this whole tournament. One more speed. And... High and leaves the 4-10. They've gone Brooklyn twice in a row. Decided he was uh, going to try and get it in the 1-3. Here's another look at that shot. And you see Danny sliding almost in the left-hand channel, playing between the fourth and fifth arrow, getting the ball out to about the 12 or 13 board, but just not enough ball speed to keep it on line. And Danny, I talked to him. He said the most important thing for him here on this lane condition was to be able to throw hard. He felt that was an advantage. Ball speed was a key to him keeping the ball in play. Well, I'll tell you what, with the strike there, he would have taken a commanding lead. The open now, it's an 11-pin match with Tommy working on a strike. That might be just the break that this young man needs. As Tommy Dilutz, excuse me, Dilutz is, uh, is, as I mentioned, a very talented player. Uh, Danny doesn't want him to let him hang around too long. He might, he might be a major factor. And Danny leaving the five pin on lane 33. As always, we bring in you all the scores on ESPN. We do that always at 10, 30, and 50 past the hour. Chance to use this for a lineup shot. That last ball kind of came off his hand, not the way he wanted it to. It, you could see by his reaction, he was looking at his hand. The players will let you know what they're thinking and how they feel every time they throw the ball. So what does uh, Deluts do here? He's uh, diluted the ball out to the right a couple of times now. He needs to... Square it up or what? That's a tough call, Mike. On this lane, on the lane condition that's out there, this is a PBA created lane condition by the PBA lane man. The surface here is excellent. So what they've done is they made it a, a shot maker's condition, and that's what it's all about. In other words, the guys you see on the show today, the top five players are all good shot makers. They're guys that can be very consistent with their ball speed and their release. They can keep the ball in the same part of the lane time after time, get it going through the first part of the lane the same way time after time. Those are shot makers. These five guys qualify for that. He converts the three pin, and we talk to him. What he thinks his chances of winning tonight are? Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm going against great odds because I'm bowling. Uh, Danny Wiseman was the best television record in the PBA history. But I uh, worked really hard to get here, and I'm just going to go out there and have a good time for the first couple frames. And in the 8th, 9th, and 10th, if I'm close, then you're going to see a different person, a lot more intense. And if I have a shot to win, who knows? Oh, bad break. Light hit, 278. Tough shot here. The ideal, ideal way, in my opinion, to pick this spare up is to play it on the right-hand side of the two-pin. Let the ball take the two and the eight, drive the two-pin into the seven. Does he play it off his strike line or what? Uh, the way they're hooking, that probably would be the logical thing to do. I would play it down the left side if I were a right-handed bowler. And that's what he's doing. He's playing it down the middle of the lane, but it just overhooked on him. And another open frame for Tommy Dulutz. 111 in the seventh frame. Trailing by 25 pins right now. Danny Wiseman is in control. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. Now, Body Shaping, America's favorite TV fitness show, introduces a fabulous foursome of home video workouts. Body Shaping Step Aerobics to burn fat and lose weight at home. Body Shaping Abs to get rock-hard abdominals. Body Shaping Arms, Chest, and Shoulders to tone and shape your entire upper body. Body Shaping Hips, Thighs, and Buns to get shapely hips, slender thighs, and firm buns. Come on, you can do this. I know you can. Body Shaping from ESPN Home Video. Only $12.95 each. Buy them today. Available at Best Buy. Hi, I'm Gina Lee Nolan, Baywatch lifeguard and Inside Sports Magazine swimsuit cover girl. I've been in sizzling Cabo San Lucas modeling exotic designer swimwear. See the results for yourself in the March issue of Inside Sports on sale now. 
And check your local listings for all new, exciting February episodes of Baywatch. You can win a trip to Baywatch and other great prizes. Details in the March issue of Inside Sports. On sale now with new stands everywhere. Look for me on the cover. It's hot. All right, Danny Wiseman up in the seventh frame, leading by 25 and Earl. Look at this adjustment that he's making. Well, this is amazing based on the fact that he slides almost that far. This is an awful tough shot for him to get any ball speed, and I just can't picture this working for him, but he's, he's willing to make a gamble. Uh, that's what Danny, that's what makes him a winner. A guy that's willing to take chances generally is a winner. Was that a two-step approach? No, he kind of took a shuffle there. Did you just watch him shuffle his feet? It did shuffle. It looked to me like he swung the ball out, and it was almost right-left, and that was it. You're the only guy I know can do that. I've seen you win for three, four, and five steps, Mike. Well, I, I can win a pot game now and then with any of those. And it's NCAA basketball and ESPN. It's number one versus number ten as UMass takes on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. That's this Saturday, February the 17th, 12 noon from Casal Coliseum in Blacksburg, Virginia. Well, back to normal here. No trouble over there. No trouble over there. And Danny Weisman, who finished higher in the standings, in other words, he qualified fourth. Tommy DeLutz qualified fifth. Danny Weisman wisely chose to finish on the left-hand lane, which is the easier, or if you want to call it easier, I'd say maybe the more playable of the two lanes. Change and release there. What a nice oh, adjustment. Great adjustment. He moved right, Earl, and went with a straight end over end roll. Again, if you aren't willing to gamble, you'll never be successful on the PBA Tour. Another look at what Mike's talking about. You can see the, the tremendous ball speed. End over end roll, keep the ball on line. And what a great adjustment. Now, does he make, does he do that over here or does he go back to normal over here? Well, I would go, I would do it over here also. I would do the same shot. Try to repeat that shot. He's hooking it. Well, he knows what he's doing, right? Right. That's why we're up here. Huh? That's why we're up here talking. They're down there bowling. What a nice adjustment, though. Well, that gave him a chance to win this match. Now, if Danny Weisman, Danny Weisman somewhere has to, here's another look at that shot. Danny Weisman somewhere has to double. And this could be the chance, but I don't like it, what he's doing up in the front here. Tommy DeLucci is really getting pumped. Talking to those pins. They listen. Oh, my God. Oh. Can these guys play or what? Let me tell you what. These are athletes, folks, and they're showing you what they're capable of doing on some very demanding lane conditions. Well, that gives him a 23-pin lead right now. What does he need to fill 18 pins in order to Well, count win? is important. He, he needs good count. He can't. A to spare and a strike. A strike winner. would be a winner, but, uh, uh, you know, if he gets bad count here, Tommy's still in this match. Well, that, that takes care of that. Doesn't it? In a hurry. That's why he's 21 and 5. 22 and 5 now. Yeah, right. 22 <laughs> and 5 now. <laughs> he had an 807 winning percentage going into this game, and now he's bumped that up. No, that's an incredible record. Uh, and having bowled on television a number of times myself in the past and know what it's like, uh, you know, you're bowling against five guys that are in top, four other guys that are at the top of their game. And to go out there and defeat them the way Danny has uh, is just tremendous match play bowling. Well, what a time for that. Whoa. Good thing he didn't do that the first shot. Yeah, though. that's pretty good timing. And he's pretty upset with himself there because uh, he's still, Danny never wastes a shot. Every ball he throws has a reason. He's always thinking out there. He's a very intelligent player, and he is always trying to learn something. Every time he rolls the ball, he's trying to learn what those lanes are going to give him, what he can use, what he can take from them. So he was upset with the reaction he got there. And he finishes with 209. But that's enough to be a winner, as the best Tommy Duluth can get is 201. Well, this is a chance for Tommy DeLutz also to learn something. Here's his chance to go out and, and uh, see if he can relax now and make a real good shot. Remember what he did last time, that great adjustment he made? See if he can repeat that. There it is. Oh, my. Great shot. Bad result. <laughs> so Tommy DeLutz, it's a learning experience for him right now. And we've got a learning experience for you coming up right after this as we'll have another average builder on adjusting.
just in. Heavy flooding expected in some areas. Next time, check the Weather Channel. We have 65 meteorologists using exclusive WeatherStar satellite technology, tailoring forecasts right down to your neighborhood. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. This is incredible. Incredible. What is it? The Double Supreme Cheeseburger. It's new. Brand new. Same kind of stuff as the Big Mac. Yeah, but I like this better. Oh, that's because Burger King flame broils them. It's got a lot more beef. A lot more beef. Gonna take all lunch hour to finish one. The Burger King Double Supreme Cheeseburger. Less bread and 75% more beef than the Big Mac. And it's flame broiled, never fried. With fries and a drink, just $2.99. Well, back to work. What's the rush? I don't think we're gonna be too busy. Maybe Burger King won't advertise it. When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt, why sports cream rubbing it in brings fast pain relief, no medicine smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. With my itchy dandruff, I said I'd try it. Denerex tingles, head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. The flakes, the itch, gone. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Tomorrow is high noon in Blacksburg when the Hokies and Minutemen lock and load to see who's top dog in the A-10. UMass Virginia Tech, tomorrow at noon on ESPN. How do you tell a male penguin from a female penguin? You can't. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, you're beautiful, really. I'm going to be Vegas on the 15th. The theme of our average builders for 1996 has been adjustments. We've talked about adjusting with the target, with speed control, and with weights in the bowling ball. This week I want to talk about adjusting by picking the proper ball for the proper condition. Bowling balls really have gone through an evolution over the years. We've gone from rubber to plastic to urethane to what is the current rage, which is reactive resin bowling balls, such as this one is. These balls are properly named because what they want to do is to react to what is out on the lane. In other words, if they hit oil, they want to slide. As soon as they hit dry on the lane, they want to hook very, very hard. Their big advantage, I think, is how hard they hit the pins. However, they do have a downside. Sometimes they react so violently to what is there. In other words, sliding on the oil and reacting so violently when they hit the dry that they're hard to control and get into the 1-3 pocket. That's when it may be time to make a change to a bowling ball like this one. It's just a regular urethane ball. The upside of this ball is it wants to make a nice, even arc to the pocket. It's easier to control. Its only downside is it doesn't hit the pins quite as hard as this one. Let's take a look at how both of them go down the lane and how they do react differently. The reactive resin ball is on the left where the urethane ball is on the right. Both going over the same target right around the third arrow. The reactive ball bites much earlier. Well, the urethane ball makes that nice, even arc that it's supposed to, to wind up in the 1-3 pocket. The important thing is that picking the right ball for the condition you're bowling on can be just as important as picking the right golf club for the proper distance. Next week, we're going to Kennewick, Washington. That's Friday, February the 23rd, 8 o'clock. It's the Track Synergy Open. Join us, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, where we'll have another average building. And in our opening match, Danny Wiseman defeated Tommy DeLutz, 209 to 179. He earns the right to take on Bob Spalding after this. Introducing the RPM Formula 4 from AMF. RPM Formula 4 from AMF. Hook and hitting power way beyond the limits. What would I like? Mmm, a baked clam. Yes. Veal parmesan. Oh, yeah. and garlic bread. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, you know, all the things that give me heartburn. Oh, and it's too late to take my Pepsi AC. What? The package says to prevent heartburn, you have to take it an hour before eating. An hour? You don't have to wait that long. I don't? Try my tag of an HB. 
Tagamet. The label says it takes half the time of your Pepsi. You're kidding. No. I mean, I could take Tagamet HP now, order what I want, and not get heartburn? Sure, and it lasts for hours. Uh, waiter. Tagamet HB, advanced prevention of heartburn in half the time. To reach $70 billion in sales like FedEx, you have to deliver what you promise. To reach $1 trillion in real estate transactions like the Century 21 system, you have to deliver like no one else. And when you're this big, the number one real estate company, you can do things others can't. Like average a home bought or sold by our customers every minute, every day. The Century 21 system can deliver the home of your dreams, maybe this minute. So don't waste a second. Call number one, Century 21. Some of the faithful here at Hollywood Bowl in the city of roses, Portland, Oregon. As we watch the warm-ups, Bob Spalding uh, was having a lot of trouble, but he's done one thing right already. He's going to make Danny Wiseman finish on that right lane. That's right. The choice is his because he finished higher in the standings, so Danny Wiseman has to do what Bob Spalding wants to do, start on the left lane, finish on the right. And the four-pin stands for Wiseman. That graphic showing that he split evenly. However, two of those three strikes on the right lane were on the crossover side. So a little bit of a deceiving stat there. That's true. The right-hand lane has been the most troublesome. Lanes 33 and 34 here at Hollywood Bowl. Cross lane at the four-pin. With the ball that goes dead straight at those spares. A little average builder out there for you people. You know, it's kind of interesting. People ask me, they say, well, you know, if the guys pick up a spare ball, they can go straight and know where it's going. Why don't they use it for their strike ball? Well, the answer to that is because when they throw it to the, in the pocket area, just like in your tip, sometimes that ball that goes the straightest doesn't hit very well. It's not that yours didn't hit, Mike. I didn't oh, mean it I, that I, way. I never tried to take anything you say personal. I mean, you <laughs> see, as Bob Spalding goes high and leaves only the three pin. Bob's ball at about the 50 what, 56 foot mark, somewhere in that neighborhood, is just going what we call a rollout. It's starting to hook, getting all its revolutions too early, loses its momentum and goes straight on the back. That's a rollout, so he's losing energy. And we're going to take a look at the game of Mr. Spalding. And watch, he's got a very good upright stance here. You can see he uses his upper body strength very well, gets over his legs well. You see the height of the backswing? A little more than I would like to see, but it's today's game. But right there, he doesn't stay with the shot long enough, in my opinion. The ball comes off his hand too soon. He doesn't chase the ball down the lane with his hand, which creates kind of a flip shot there and loses ball speed. Oh, that one rolled out to miss the hip in the one, two, four. Uh, that's an awful hard shot to play. The only way to play the rollout is go way deep inside and let the ball roll out high flush. Uh, where he's playing now. Here's another look at that last shot. Now watch the ball. Watch the arc of the ball. Here you can see it's turning, turning. Now it starts to roll and just straightens out. It doesn't continue to hook. And gets a good break, knocking out the temp and leaving the one, two, four. Everything's going to be an adventure for Bob because the ball's going to roll out even on his spares. Well, is Danny going up? For, yes, he is. He's going in front of that ball, returning again. He was practicing this while we were away on the practice pair off to the side. He was working on this shot and see if he's very comfortable, more comfortable now than he was before. There we have it. Leaves the uh, 6, 9, 10. They're all in a bunch down there for Danny, and he's an excellent spare shooter. He will stand left, pick up his spare ball, throw it hard and straight. Hit either side of that six pin will be a winner for him. And be sure to stay with us later tonight at the Claremore Classic. The LPBT as Cindy Coburn Carroll tries to defend her title. That's tonight at 12.30. Stay up late. You can sleep in tomorrow. On the left lane, which has given them less trouble. And still does. Danny Weissman just keeps rolling along. He's won eight consecutive televised matches now, and uh, he just keeps working his way up the ladder. You know what he does? He qualifies, I think, fourth or fifth on so purpose, so he just kind of add on to that, streak, add on right that streak. Well, Houston tried that last week, though, and it didn't work. Well, let's see if Mr. Spaulding can get something going here. He's got to put some pressure on Weissman. 
And that's just not going to happen when the ball, he can't control the break point. The, the break point is going to be at a different spot down the lane where it starts to roll out. You don't know where it's going to end up. Just depending on whether he throws a little harder or a little slower. But All right, for the spare, only the three pin here. Shouldn't be much of a problem for him. And has it. There's his fiance, Tana Fulmer. And this is Mike Durbin along with Earl Anthony. We're coming to you live from the Hollywood Bowl in Portland, Oregon, the City of Roses. It's the championship round finals of the Oregon Open. And in our opening match, Danny Wiseman defeated Tommy DeLutz. And right now he leads by one pin over Bob Spalding in the fourth frame of the second game. No, it's kind of interesting, Mike, is none of the top five that we have on the telecast today has even been in the top 24 yet this year. There's his first strike of the match, and that was a powerful hit strike there, Mike. But even that ball, when it didn't look like rolled out right at the very end, still was enough to get the five out. Well, he struggled and struggled, but he's still very much in this match. Well, there's, there's a good there's look a view I want to see of how many steps he's taken here. Watch him kind of slide that left foot a little bit. So it's three steps is what you're saying. Yeah, you're One, right. Two, three steps. Three. Boy, he's got it done. Uh, I tell you, Brian Voss played this way last night, and I was really impressed. I watched all eight games of match play last night, and here's another look at that shot. And Brian Voss played this exact same shot with and just dominated the field. He made a tremendous move and almost led the tournament. Wow. Four steps standing at the back of the approach on one lane. Three steps standing in front of the ball return on the other lane. Is that versatile or is, uh, is he just confused? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the last time I saw someone use this type of versatility was Don Johnson at the Tournament of Champions one year. Hall of Famer Don Johnson, I should say. Uh, when he was playing the, like the fifth arrow on one lane and, and playing out over the channel on the right-hand lane, actually throwing the ball in the air over the channel, pointing it up off the edge of the lane. And he could do that. He, he could, could do, do that. that. He was yeah. what a talent he was, huh? All right, here we go. Danny shot this on the right-hand lane to see if he can pick it up on the left lane. This is this can be chopped. You have to be careful. Six, nine, ten, cross lane, going straight at it. Look out! Oh boy, you saw that halfway down the lane. Slides the six in front of the nine. Well, Earl, your uh, prognostication abilities continue to dazzle us all. Bob Spaulding. Here's a look at that last shot. The ball just skidded on him. Remember, he almost chopped it on the right-hand lane, so he gave it more room and didn't quite get back. Big opportunity for Mr. Spaulding right Is this here. a different ball here? And he had a disappointing loss last year to Mike Albee. I talked to him about losing there and had he had recovered. Yeah, basically, that, that, that basically took maybe a week. You know, I, I did everything I could that game. There was nothing to do. That was kind of like fate. You know, that was supposed to be at that time. I made good shots. I made him strike twice in the tent. You know, that's in the past. Talking about his loss at the Tournament of Champions in Chicago last year to Mike Albee. Bowled a great game and just didn't win. Oh, how about this now? This is a guy that's found a way to make it work. We keep talking about this. This is a shot maker's lane condition. Here's a look at it. Well, Danny Wiseman's streak is in jeopardy through five frames. He trails by 24 pins. We'll be back after this. How much younger do you want to look? The choice is yours when you get rid of gray gradually with Grecian Formula 16. Just comb in this clear liquid and look what happens. Day by day, Grecian Formula replaces gray with natural looking color so you can decide exactly how much gray you want to lose. Stop and leave a little gray or keep going till you lose all the gray. How much younger do you want to look? Grecian lets you decide. Liquid, cream, or convenient foam. Why does your automobile need an oxygen sensor? They, um... Because, uh, well, it, it's, for, it's for the passengers, really. Because if there's no oxygen, look out. <laughs> that's not good. That's not, that's, whoa. Sometimes life calls for deeper answers. That's why there's CompuServe. For less than $10 per month, you can visit over 3,000 interest areas and get easy access to the Internet. Enter CompuServe. Call for free software and 10 free hours online. I'd like to demonstrate the PGA Golf Class. This is how low you should go. And this is how loud it can be. 
At a senior event, though, you can go this loud. Because they're getting a little bit older and their hearing isn't as good. And Danny Wiseman again, three-stepping it on lane 34 in front of the ball return. Moving to this deep angle, almost setting it down on the left channel. But it's working. Well, it's kind of an amazing shot. You would never see this 10 years ago, Mike. Why not? Because nobody could get the ball to finish that hard, except maybe a Mark Roth or a Marshall Holman. Ten years ago, there's a look at the pin action. No one could get the ball to turn that sharply on the back end. There were very, very few players, maybe a handful, five guys you might be able to name if you sat down and really struggled that could create that kind of a back end or that much right-to-left action. But there, there were guys playing that deep back then on in certain occasions. They just kind of fell it back into the pocket. They played that deep. Uh, a lot of very, very good players on that inside angle, but they made the ball skid on a line for like 58 feet and then just turn over a couple of hits. Well, couple might skid times. it for 60, but... <laughs> Trying for a double, and doesn't get it. Suddenly, the left lane giving him more trouble. You can see the concentration on the face of Bob Spaulding. He thinks he's got this one in hand, and uh, if he does get by Danny Weissman, they don't get any easier. Remember, Brian Voss waiting in the wings for an opportunity to win this tournament, and he has to get by the winner of this match to get to the tournament leader, David Wawatka. Kind of interesting also, Mike, that this is our fourth tournament of the year, and we've had 20 different bowlers on the telecast. We have yet to have the same guy repeat in any of our telecasts. So is that because the PBA is doing a different lane condition every week? Well, I think that's because it's a test every week, and I think you're right. They're probably putting out different shots every week. The players have to make good shots. Uh, with the bowling balls that are available today, it's my opinion that if you let these guys go out and just bowl on, say, a house condition, they'd all average 250. Right lane continuing to give everybody trouble. Tana says, uh, dear, you can make it. Can he make it? You betcha he can make this. All right, hit the right-hand side of that six pin, slide it into seven. Aiming at about a quarter of an inch and just misses at 60 feet. Can't come much closer, but right now we've got an eight pin match. Bob Spaulding with 140 in the seventh frame. Wiseman, if he strikes, will have 132. So three frames to go, still anybody's match, and there's the score. We see it. You know, nobody has converted a split on television yet this year on television. That we've seen, yeah, we've because seen. Tommy Duluth's made the 4-9 in the tenth frame, but we had gone to commercial break, so we didn't get to see that. Big shot here. He needs to load up. And it does. And he does. Well, he's figured that lane out. He gets the finish over there. He does. He he's at the advantage right now. He gets he gets to finish. Here's another look at that shot. Watch the ball straighten out. It's still rolling out, as Mike mentioned, but he had plenty of power. Entry angle is important, and the ball is gripping the lane. And he gives it a little hip bump to knock it out. Back-to-back wall shots on that lane for Danny Weissman. Any way he can get it, but he's got to make the adjustment here. Well, this is the shot of the, of the match for Danny Wiseman. If he doesn't, if he doesn't strike here, uh, his fate is not in his hands anymore. It'll be all up to Bob Spaulding. Does he move deeper, or what does he do? Good question, Mike. The left-hand lane has been the one that they've both been... Danny Wiseman in the opening match hit it best, as far as hitting the pocket goes. Oh, whatever he did, it was perfect. Well, I, I am continually amazed at the ability of these young athletes, especially the... These younger guys coming up, their ability to throw a bowling ball at 22, 23 miles an hour and still rotate it the way they do, the strength in their forearms and wrist is phenomenal, and their ability to make adjustments and know what that bowling ball is going to do when they're feeling the heat. Bob Spaulding, ninth frame, trailing by two. And the Brooklyn, but he leaves the seven. He was going for the demoralizer shot there, but... <laughs> well... I'll tell you what, anything looks good on the scoreboard. If you can get the strike. Oh, that right lane, they'll take anything. But right now, he's the best he can get a spare. Now's not a good time to get careless. Make the spare, go over to your good lane, get the two strikes in the 10th, and put the pressure on Weissman to double. And he has the spare in the ninth frame. We enter the 10th. Danny Wiseman leading by two, but working on a double. Bob Spaulding, though, on his favorite lane. He's hit it the last three times in a row. 
this first ball is so important. If he can strike here, it comes down to pin count. And it would put the pressure on Danny Weissman to make a very good shot on lane 34, first ball in the 10th. Of course, if he can double, it's all the better. Lots of room here. Oh, the can opener. Oh, boy. Lots of power there. He's checking the scoreboard. You can see him looking off to the right to check, make sure that he knows exactly where he stands. He knows he's two pins behind, and a strike will put him eight pins ahead. That uh, light hit where you kind of, the ball kind of separates the five and six, at least I always called it a can opener. Maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, I've, I've been around a while, you know. That was back when they had can openers. I, I remember and, reading that in a 1923 bowling Did you really? Yeah, I you read, read the same one, huh? <laughs> For the double and the lead. Oh. Great right. shot, but leaves the 10 pin. That's all you can do is make the good shot. Now, pick up the spare, shoot your 200 even. Danny Weissman with a two pin lead. Nine spare nine, we got a tie. Uh oh. Now there's a major, major error there. Boy, is that laxity? We've talked about Danny's record on TV. We had a chance to ask him why he bowls so well on television. Um, I just, uh, I have a plan of attack that I, I kind of abide by, and that's uh, just going out and making 10 really good shots and hope my opponent doesn't match it. You know, it's just, uh, I've been very fortunate on TV, and uh, hope, hopefully it continues. A little short with that one. Oh, he talked about being fortunate. Well, What's fortunate for one man is unfortunate for the other. Danny Weissman has set, thrown several crossovers today, and I can offhand can remember three that carried. And uh, is that four? No, it's the third one. That's right the third there. one that's carried. So, but this is an, a very fortunate, as you mentioned, for him here in the tenth frame. Uh, an unfortunate thing for Bob Spaulding, who gave it the best he could, but it wasn't enough. And he leaves the seventh pin. With a spare conversion, Danny will finish up with 211 and be the winner, 211 to 199. So is he going to practice on a strike here? Yeah, he's going to change and give it a little practice here. He'll forget the spare, try something different for the next match. And Hall of Famer Brian Voss coming on. Going straight up the track there. Did you see that? Uh, that was 4-6. It have been a full rack. Oh, right does he know that, though? Oh, yeah, he was looking. He knows where those spots are. Okay, well, we're headed to our semifinal match. When we come back, Earl Anthony, the Hall of Famer, will interview or have a guest, a very important guest. Stay tuned for that. On a and &E's biography, meet the men who faced crisis with charisma. A bold leader who transformed America into a world power. A former actor who won the role of a lifetime. Make my day. The man who will be remembered as our greatest ex-president. The war hero everybody liked. And the masterful politician who swept into Iraq on a desert storm. Commanders in Chief on Biography begins February 19th on A&E. For over three decades, her music has commanded the respect of millions. Now, go behind the scenes and meet Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. Join Ray Charles, Whitney Houston, Keith Richards, Dionne Warwick, and more for a star-studded biography of the lady and her music, Aretha Franklin, Queen of Soul, exclusively on the Disney Channel. the PBA inducted three members into the Hall of Fame Mike Albee in his first year of eligibility Dave Houston in his first year of eligibility both made it in to the performance category and in the meritorious service cat category Larry Lichstein made it in after several years on the ballot and now let's go to Earl Anthony who'll be talking to Dave Houston with me, David Husted, soon to be inducted in the PBA Hall of Fame. Matter of fact, April 21st, 1996, he will be one of the newest members. And David, what a thrill. What, an, what a climax to a great career. Well, Earl, it's just that. Yeah, I've kind of come full circle, if you will. I've uh, been out here half my life on the tour, and now to end it with, uh, kind of on the downside, end it with the Hall of Fame induction. And going in with Mike Albee, it's going to be uh, extremely exciting. Two really great players. Also, David, this has to be a, a real, real big thrill for your father, Champ. Yeah, you know, he bowled a little bit in the Northwest and tried the PBA and the old National Bowling League, and uh, he did all he could do around the Northwest but didn't like the pro circuit. So uh, 
he's going to be very excited. Our whole family is going to be back there, so we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be a thrill for the Husteads. Thank you, David. Thank you. And thank you, Earl, in our match right there. Danny Wiseman defeated Bob Spaulding 210-199. to 199. Let's take a look now at the, some of the other finishers. Our top 24, sixth place, Jess Stabrook, missed by about 30 pins. And Bob Learn, we've seen him many times before. Scott Alexander, a very improving young player out of the Seattle area. And, of course, everybody knows this name, the number one player in the world, Norm Duke. And Mike Edwards supporting a goatee now. Rick Steelsmith trying to still live up to that potential. Steve Jarrost, always improving, and young Ricky Ward, ex-rookie of the year, back on track. Steve Wilson, we saw him one time on our telecast, and 300, Bob Benoit. And my old buddy Andy Nyer making another finals. He's getting to be a regular in there. And right behind him, Steve Hoskins. He made the telecast here last year also. And a great regional player, Greg Kemp. And Mark Williams used to be chairman of the PBA's tournament committee. Doug Kent still looking for that first PBA when he won the Masters, the ABC Masters, in 1991. And Justin Romek was the tournament's leader, leading qualifier last year. And Paul Kohler, new face on the PBA Tour. Jeff Morin from Rockway, Rockaway, New Jersey. Robbie Porter, a future star. He struggled during match play. And, of course, the alternate great player, Tommy Baker, just missed here last year also. Veteran Tommy Baker. I was talking to him just last week. There he is, the PBA Hall of Famer, Brian Voss, trying to get tuned in to this pair of lanes as in our semifinal match. He'll be taking on red-hot Danny Wiseman. Stay tuned for that match coming right up. Don't roll with the punches. Throw them. It's not whether you win or lose. It's whether you win. 11 strikes down, 10 pins up, one ball to go. Great. Well, it can't get any worse than this. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Huh. I stand corrected. Make it a Bud Light. You're never gonna get it open. You want dazzling whiter teeth? You want Aqua Fresh Whitening. Sounds good. But how safe is it? It's everyday safe and no peroxide, bleach, or harsh abrasives. What's in this anyway? It's a real breakthrough. The patented TriClean formula safely breaks up stains to help get your teeth their whitest. Oh, yeah? How does it stack up to my toothpaste? Aquafresh whitening with fluoride is clinically proven to whiten better than Crest. Even Rembrandt can't beat it. Now that's whitening. Aquafresh whitening. Safe to use every day for dazzling whiter teeth. Relief than the regular strength of Bayer or Tylenol. Addison, when you've really got a headache. When sports cream, when legs are sore, when backs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream rubbing it in brings fast pain relief. No medicine is smell. Why sports cream? Because it works. 195 miles an hour to qualify, 300 miles to race. The NASCAR Bush Grand National Goodies 300. The first race of the year happens faster than you think. Tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. And some of our junior pro-am bowlers here supporting signs that support Dave Houston, who obviously they think a lot of in this part of the country. Oh, no question. He's Oregon, Portland, Milwaukee, Oregon, I should say. A uh, local player right here, and the whole family's been here for a number of years and done an outstanding job in the bowling industry here also. And, you know, they talk a lot about role models. Dave Houston, great role model. No question about it. You know, he's, he's a complete package. Tremendous talent, great athlete in high school, basketball and other sports. Great golfer. Is something he, something he, he could golf? help you with, yes. Well, you're trying. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, right. When you don't have much to work with, it's hard to improve, you know.
Well, you know, uh, we had said that nobody had missed a one-pin spare this year, but actually on the fill ball in the previous game, after seven, 67 consecutive conversions, somebody did miss. But it really didn't count as an open frame as Danny converts the four-pin. All right, that's our first look, Mike, at uh, someone we all admire, Brian Voss. And Brian's trying the Danny Wiseman school of the front of the ball. Does he take four steps there or three? Four. He's, he takes four. <laughs> the right lane. This isn't where Brian would normally play that right-hand lane, but because of the lane surface and the ball reaction he's getting, you can see what he's doing. He's taking four steps, uh, little tiny steps, still getting the slide in, and very baby, few people are steps. strong enough. Yeah, baby <laughs> step. Very few people are strong enough to create the ball speed you might need to get it down the lane with baby, that little bit of steps, you might say. Maybe so Richard Dreyfuss is really, what about Bob, with the baby steps? <laughs> and the tip in rocks, but doesn't fall. Brian Boss is wearing a microphone. So we'll try and eavesdrop on some of his conversations with himself. That's a 10 pin. Does it in silence. Danny Wiseman, again in front of the ball return. Now we see that. Uh, this is the rubber match between these two guys. Almost tripped the four pin, Mike. Haven't been many trip fours tonight, Earl. You know, that no, gets up there, it seems like it stays. Sometimes it's got company. That's right. You know, to give you an idea of what the PBA players are all about, uh, they don't just bowl and go watch a movie or uh, go out and have a hamburger. These guys are busy with the official PBA charity, which is the Children's Miracle Network. And two of our players, Tommy Delutz and Dave Watka, went and visited the kids over at Dornbecker Children's Hospital right here in Portland and spent a, an hour or two over there shaking hands, talking to the kids, giving them some autographs, and hopefully cheering them up a little bit. They did that today? They did that today. Isn't that amazing? When they got that big night ahead of them, they take time out to do that. It's now these young kids, uh, they're very much involved in making things work uh, for the PBA and of course for the, they know what it's like to be young and have some problems. And Danny Wiseman has no problems on the left lane as he flushes a strike in the third frame. Brian Boss now, on very, lane 34. Very quickly, let me give you folks at home an idea of what goes on during a PBA event. The size of the field here was 140, the field averaged 205. To get a check, you had to average 210. To make the top 24, you had to average 214 and a half. And will it hit it? Well, the pin got in the way. That six pin ran interference. It looked like a pulling guard. And his two sisters right here, Cheryl Colo and Dina Weber. A little concern on both of those faces. She married in the Weber family, did she? I did. The Weber, he gets around everywhere, doesn't he? Boss converts that spare. All right, now the rest of the uh, situation here, the logistics. The format here is 18 games of qualifying. All 140 bowlers bowl that. After the 18 games, total pins. The top 24 advance to match play. Those top 24 bowl each other a one-game match. The top five after bonus pins and carrying their pinfall over, you see here on our televised portion of the event. So what we're seeing is just the uh, tip of the iceberg as he leaves the 2-4-5. <laughs> You're seeing five guys at the top of their game. Mike, there's the tournament stats. Some of the things you just went through right there. Oh, well, that looks familiar, yes. Yeah. 214 <laughs> average to make match play. Is that normal or is that low or high? 214, I, I, I think that's probably a little low, don't you? In that area, and that's a open frame for Brian Voss as he chops the 245. Danny Wiseman. What did we say? He's now 23 and 5 on television? Yeah, and good fortune continues to smile on Danny. When you get Brian Voss to make a mistake, it's, uh, they're few and far between. You have to feel blessed. Trying for a quick double to take advantage of that open frame. And does. And it's a senior PGA Tour on ESPN, the GTA Suncoast Tournament.
this Saturday and Sunday from Tampa, Florida, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. All the greats are there. Nicholas Palmer, Trevino, Player Ford, and the defending champion, Dave Stockton. Well, if there's anything that you could say Danny Weissman is, he, I would have to consider him a talented opportunist because when someone makes a mistake, Danny's right there to take advantage of it. And generally, it's enough to get a win for him. He's squeaked by those first two matches. You know, he, it seems like sometimes he concentrates so hard on that right lane that he forgets on the left lane or something and That's makes right. a mistake over there. And maybe we forget that the left lane, even though it's been more scorable than the right, still isn't tough. easy. Yeah, it's still, still tough. tough yeah. Baby split. The idea is to fit the ball between the two pins, let it hit the three pin and deflect into the ten. And when the lanes are hooking, sometimes that's hard to do. Cross lane. Perfect. Keeps the pressure on Boss. No yeah. open frames there. I think Danny Wiseman knows, and we all know, uh, after watching this young man bowl for a number of years, that at any given time, Brian Boss can throw four or five strikes in a row. So you can't ever, ever take a deep breath and relax. On lane 34. Short step, still pretty good speed, Earl. There's the first one. Well, he's got to take advantage of that now and hit this other lane. It's beginning to, it's beginning to look more like the left lane is the problem. Uh, sometimes when you're performing in a situation where you feel you're under duress of some kind, you concentrate more and make a better shot. Maybe that's what they're doing on lane 34, and like you mentioned, maybe then they're over-relaxing on lane 33, and letting it get away. Oh, he's really deep now on this one. Ball almost set up for him. It rolled out right at the pocket, but leaves that four pin, and again, nobody seems to be able to trip that four pin out. I keep waiting for Brian to, there he is. What, what did he say there? I had my, I, I was talking when I shouldn't have. I wanted to hear what he had to say. I'm just going to say, I will keep waiting for Brian to say something. Brian Boss, struggling through five and a half frames. Trailing by 22 pins. Danny Wiseman up in the sixth frame when we come back after this. This is incredible. Incredible. What is it? The double supreme cheeseburger. It's new. Brand new. Same kind of stuff as the Big Mac. Yeah, but I like this better. Oh, that's because Burger King flame broils them. It's got a lot more beef. A lot more beef. Gonna take all lunch hour to finish one. The Burger King double supreme cheeseburger. Less bread and 75% more beef than the Big Mac. And it's flame broiled, never fried. With fries and a drink, just $2.99. Well, back to work. What's the rush? I don't think we're gonna be too busy. Maybe Burger King won't advertise it. weather update. A little breezy today, so wear a light jacket. Next time, check the Weather Channel. Our severe weather watch tracks storms with the most advanced satellite technology available. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. And Danny Wiseman, ready to uh, bowl on lane 34, leading by 22 pins in this event. Should mention that... Uh, Tommy Delutz took home $4,000 and Bob Spalding five. The loser of this match is going to go home with 6000 The winner, an opportunity to bowl for 19. <laughs> Wiseman figuring it out on that right lane. Boy, he looks tough. You know, he's the only guy, I mentioned this earlier, there, were one, there was one 300-game bowl this week. Out of all the players, 140 bowlers, they bowled all those games, there was one 300-game. The PBA this year is averaging four in an event. One game bowl to 300, that was Danny Wiseman. And he got $1,000 bonus for that, so that's not a bad... Uh, not, a bad not a bad little bonus. little right bonus there. there, yeah. And there's a $25,000 bonus uh, given by Mark Frank for a 300-game bowl on television. Anybody does that, they're going to really earn it. Oh, the solid tempting. Tell me now, if you're Dave Watko over there, ready to bowl your first time for a title. Which one of these guys do you want to bowl? Hall of Famer or a guy that never loses on TV? <laughs> That's a tough... I don't think he's going to worry about that, though. You know, if I were him, I don't think I'd worry about either one of them. Just go over and do the best you can. Uh, easier said than done, but that's the whole idea of this game. Get over here. It's an individual game. There's no defense. You have to go out and just knock them down. Cross lane at the 10 pin. Has it. Boss has got to get it going. 
He has two strikes in this match, both of them on lane 34. There's Dave Watkin warming up. We get a look at his style. Smooth, balanced at the foul line. Nice follow through. Yeah, a lot of power in that release, too. He can definitely get some rotation on the ball. Running out of frames for Brian Voss. And the solid 10 pin, no breaks going Voss's great way. And his reaction there, Mike, was a clap of the hands and come on. He's uh, he's getting a little upset. Tempers hey, his joining. pins are just not cooperating. At the 10 pin. We talked to him. He's won nine years in a row, at least one tournament. Is the streak on his mind? I really started thinking about it a few years ago. After, uh, you know, it was eight years in a row, people started telling me about it. And then, uh, you know, last year it was nine in a row, and, and this year it could be ten in a row. I, I certainly, you know, I want to continue that streak forever. I think uh, the infamous Earl has 14, and uh, I'd like to get at least 15. Why does everybody always want me? Infamous. 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 Why are they always picking on me? Why did he refer to you as infamous? <laughs> That's an infamous 10 pin right now. Well, Brian is one of my favorite people. I really mm. admire him. I admire his ability. I admire him as a person. He's a class act. But and, he doesn't have to do it, beat my record. And, and, and <laughs> when I last watched him, he beat you in golf. Of course, he was getting some strokes. But at the 10 pin, has it? <laughs> Danny Wiseman leading by 24 as Brian Voss can't knock down the 10 pin except with a second ball. Could be a problem there. Boy, you called that. I'll when tell it, you. When it left his hand, it was pretty obvious where that was going to go, and Danny knew it just as much as I did. Right through the middle of the head pin, the six, seven, ten. Here's another look at it. This ball is going left when it leaves his hand. It never had a chance to get to the right hand side of the head pin, and when it rolls out on the end, it's dead flush middle of the head pin. There comes the pin count. We're right back into a match now. If he gets eight out, it's under ten pins. But he plays it cute, I think, and got the uh, nine out. I don't think he went for that. And we want you to stay up later tonight. Watch uh, Jan Schmidt, the Isla Wagner, call all the action for the Claremore Classic. That's the LPBT tournament. Oh, it's John Neighbor. I'm sorry. My little promo sheet was wrong. <laughs> so you're close enough. Well, yeah, just difference between male and female. Nothing serious here. Right tournament, that's the important part. Okay. A lot of talented players on that ladies tour. And leaves the four pin. Right now, though, we could have a tie match here, you know that? Yep, every match has been close, right down to the end, and Danny Wiseman has been the guy that's pulled him off. One way or another. At the One end way of or the match. other, that's right. Remember last match, he needed to, needed to make a good shot, and he crossed over and carried the strike to win that one. Very disappointing ending for Bob Spaulding. Brian Voss still has a possible 203. Danny Wiseman, the most he can shoot is 203. And has the four pin. Well, he sits down knowing that uh, he can still can't get win shut the match. Out. He can't get shut out of the match, right? Yeah. I was looking for that phrase. You just <laughs> it Okay, there. I'll write it down for you right Thanks, now. I appreciate <laughs> that. You're such a nice guy. This is the shot he needs right here. This is a very important shot for Brian Voss. If he can get by the, the right-hand lane, he's got a good opportunity on the left lane to develop the ball speed he needs to keep it in the pocket. Boy, he's got that lane. I'll tell you what, he probably would rather stay on this lane the way he's going. Well, I'll tell you what, he's had three strikes in this match, all of them on this lane. What a great arm swing. What great fundamentals this guy has. Ten in the pit, and he's pumping. Boy, I'll tell you what, he's getting into the action now. He says, okay, I got a chance. Remember last time on this lane, the solid ten pin. He needs this hit right here this to even the match. Got all of that one. Yeah. Watched it all the way, didn't he? Well, we heard what he said that time, didn't we? Everybody heard what he said that time. Even yeah. <laughs> the lead. Well, if Danny Wise 
Bozeman's going to keep his streak going. He's going to have to earn it this time. Here's another look at that last shot, the crucial one, and you saw the preparation Brian Voss went through, and there is some elevation, folks. I tell you what, slam dunk the basketball with that one. Voss is into it, and he is a winner. Count equally important. When I say he's a winner, I mean he's a winner as a person. He hasn't won this match yet. Needs 10. Get him. Well, he's talking to that ball to get him, and it did. Well, he made his two sisters happy. Now let's see if Danny Wiseman can turn it around. Well, Wiseman. Remember last time he hit the middle of the head pin on this lane. See what he does. He yeah. gives it more room. There's the story. Has to do them one at a time. And Danny Wiseman doesn't bail it up this time. Well, it took a great player with a great finish to stop a wonderful, wonderful streak. Player using both of them around in front of the ball return on the right lane and able to go back to their normal shot on the left lane and perform under pressure. Wiseman, though, leaves the 10 pin. With a strike, he'll finish with 192. Brian Boss looking for that decade of wins and to get hot on Earl Anthony's tail. Just five more years and he'll have you. <laughs> it's a long time. You're right, it is. Especially when you're 37. Hard to believe Brian's 37 already. Now Kerry he says, and it always does. That fill ball knows. The pins know when it's the fill ball. Well, Brian Boss has defeated Danny Wiseman, 203 to 192. We'll be back with Championship Frame, a review of our previous three matches after this. Bring up over $700 billion in sales like AT&T, and people talk. Reach one trillion in real estate transactions, like the Century 21 system, and they must be talking to us. Because when you're this big, the number one real estate company, you can do things others can. Like average your home bought or sold by our customers every minute, every day. The Century 21 system can sell your home fast. Maybe this minute. So don't waste a second. Call number one, Century 21. With my HE dandruff, I said I'd try it. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. The flakes, the itch, gone. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Everyone knows that the best way to make chocolate milk is to add Hershey's syrup. But here's something you may not know. Hershey's syrup is virtually fat-free. And believe it or not, it's always been that way. Mo. What would I like? Mmm, a baked clam. Yes. Veal parmesan. Oh, yeah. and garlic bread. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah, all the things that give me heartburn. Oh, and it's too late to take my Pepsi AC. What? The package says to prevent heartburn, you have to take it an hour before eating. An hour? You don't have to wait that long. I don't? Try my Tagamin HB. Tagamin? The label says it takes half the time of your Pepsi. You're kidding. No. I mean, I could take Tagamin HB now, order what I want, and not get heartburn? Sure, and it lasts for hours. Uh, waiter! Tagamin HB, advanced prevention of heartburn in half the time. The Wall Street Journal keeps you on the cutting edge with news and insights that can affect you personally and professionally. Subscribe now and have the journal delivered to your home or office. Now, with your paid 10-week subscription, you'll also receive our gift of two weeks free. That's 12 weeks of the journal for just 65 cents a day. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call now, 800-356-9800. That's 800-356-9800 for the Wall Street Journal. time for championship frame and we've had some exciting finishes this is Danny Wiseman in the opening match in the 10th frame Earl oh Danny on a 23 pin lead as you can see needs his first strike really to lock the match up and you can't roll it much better than this it's 10 in the pit for Danny and his reaction just a little nudge there thank you very much and we see he wins 209 to 179 over Tommy Dulutz and he goes into match number two and again we're in the 10th frame, Danny Wiseman finishing on lane 34. 
Danny Weissman, this is his first ball in the 10th again, and good fortune is always appreciated. You see the crossover hit. Not what he would normally do in that situation, but he's not going to turn it down. It's a winner. And that helped him defeat Bob Spaulding 210 to 199 for his 20, uh, what is it, 23rd win on television, 23rd match game win. But Brian Voss put a stop to that here on the 12th ball in our semifinal match. Well, Voss needs them all to put the pressure on Danny Wiseman, and this is the shot that does it. 10 in the pit for 203 score. Danny Weissman needed three to tie and couldn't function in that situation. So Brian Voss, proving that he truly is a Hall of Famer, defeats Danny Weissman 203 to 192, setting up our championship match, which will feature Voss versus newcomer Watka. Stay tuned. For the star-studded Dallas Cowboys, it Here was a go. super show. The thrilling climax to an amazing season. Share the glory in this exclusive Cowboys Super Pack. The incredible new Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl Champions video. Plus, this collector's dream. A special leather-bound Sports Illustrated commemorative edition. Both free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. Call this number now and jump on with the silver and blue as they take you along through a season of wild twists and turns on their sensational ride to Super Bowl 30. It's a one-of-a-kind video featuring the one and only Dallas Cowboys. It's Troy and Emmett. Oh man, that's good stuff. It's the Moose and Jay. The undeniable flash of prime time and the playmaker. Don't miss this super Cowboys tribute free from Sports Illustrated. Call now and get your exclusive championship package, including the Sports Illustrated Super Special Commemorative. Each collector's edition is leather-bound, gold-embossed, and individually numbered. This colorful memento magnificently captures the Cowboys in a championship style you'll treasure forever. Both collector's items are free when you order 54 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the famous swimsuit issue, for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Don't miss this exclusive, unbeatable Super Pack. Call now to get the Super Cowboys video and the special leather-bound collector's commemorative edition, both free from Sports Illustrated. Every week, enjoy a sports experience like no other. Sports Illustrated, get into it. Joining me this week is the proprietor here at Hollywood Bowl, Mark Frank. Mark, welcome to ESPN. Hi, Mike. Mark, uh, all of us around the rest of the country have been reading and seeing on television the floods in Oregon. Tell us a little bit about that and how it affected the tournament. Well, it was, it was extremely tragic for the area, and thousands of people, you know, they lost their homes, and power was out for quite a while. But as far as the tournament, the flood flood didn't affect us too bad. There was a few pro-am bowlers that didn't make it on Sunday. They were, they were from the Salem area where part of Salem was evacuated. And a few of the pro bowlers were a little late getting here. But other than that, the tournament went off real well. Well, really minor compared to what everyone else suffered. And our hearts really go out to all of those people. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay. And now we're ready for the championship match, the biggest match of Dave Watka's career so far. So far, and he's letting Voss finish on the right-hand lane, and uh, of course Voss showed us that he could play either lane in the ninth and tenth frames when he threw four in a row to defeat Danny Wiseman. We were talking in between, and you think that he may have a letdown in this championship match. We see there he had six strikes, and you know, three on each lane. And leaves the temp in to start the match. Well, I, I was just discussing that with you, Mike, thinking that he just beat a guy that they they were thinking was unbeatable, Danny Wiseman. Danny had gone 23 and 5 or something like that on television, which is a phenomenal record. He had to strike out in the tenth to, to get rid of Danny Wiseman, get him out of the way. And now he's got a young kid here who has never been in this position before. You can see the nervousness in his face. Uh, David Watka is a tremendous talent, but at the same time, He's never been here before. So maybe Voss is thinking this is going to be a little easier than Wiseman. Well, right through the heart. 
kind of what you would think on this right lane, as difficult as it is. Well, I would like to see him stay clean. Just get a couple of spares, the first two or three frames, till he gets acclimated, to get used to bowling in front of this huge live audience, uh, bowling on a television uh, television in front of a tremendous TV audience on ESPN. Let him loosen up a little bit, and maybe he'll be all right. Then we can see what he's, what he's capable of doing uh, once he gets his feet uh, solid, solid on the ground, so he can get his get a good foundation going here. Got a tremendous talent. Well, they're both off of spares. Second frame, lane 33. Okay. Excellent shot. Leaves the four pin on the left lane. There's his proud parents, Charlie and Kathy Watkin. She's quite a bowler in her own right. Yes, she is. She has a WIBC title. She has a gold medal in some uh, in some amateur event. She also she also has won a professional tournament back in 1979 on the on the ladies pro tour. So David's trying to match mom's record, and it's pretty hard to do. Kathy's a good player. Ryan Voss taking that trek around in front of the ball return. It says, hey, this isn't golf. <laughs> <laughs> well, fade is just one way of saying quit hooking, you know. It looked like it was going to go through the middle of the head pin. It's set up for him. He got away with it. Cross lane at the four pin. Straight. Well, that was a great a great uh, stat we just saw there. And the graphics on the, the bottom of the, of, the, of the picture when Brian was shooting at spare. He is... There it is again. This is great. 60th career TV pinch, 58 and 46 with almost a 220 average. That again demonstrates how tough it is. How yeah. tough it is to win against the best players in the world week wow. after week on television. Look what Weissman has done. Yeah. Well, this is the man of the hour right here, young David Wadka. You don't get very many chances to win on the PBA Tour. When you do, you take advantage of them. Here's his chance. Oh, what a great shot. That's 100 miles an hour. Back to back. Way. Back to back great shots. I'll tell you what, you see the standings. He got did nothing but get better. Right now, he just wants to hold his position. That's right. Well, all five guys, they came from nowhere, basically. Tommy yeah. Lutz after the second round, was 38. So does that tell you the condition changed as the week went on? Or? Well, either that or they found the right equipment at the oh, right okay. time. we got to take a positive spin on that right, yes. Here's another look at that uh, last shot we hear by David Watka, and this is his strike ball. Uh, see how deliberate he is with his footwork, but look how free and easy the arm swing is. Gets in perfect position to get the ball through. Shoulders perfectly over the knee. What a great, great finishing position. That left arm point right at the opposite wall. Wow. And there's his fiance. Fiance. See, say, Lori. Caniglio. Is that a nice pronounce? try, Mike? Nice try. That was a good try. All right. Well, I think that maybe Mr. Wadka is getting more relaxed now and enjoying and the position. Voss has his hands full here. We've got a great match for the championship. He didn't get the Hall of Fame for no reason at all, I'll tell you what. Well, there's no question. He's a tremendous talent. We've, I've said that about 50 times already today, but it's because I truly believe it. Scorekeeper Philip Ringen are pointing out that Brian Voss leads by 11 pins right now. Trying to make it 21. Put some pressure on the young man. And he did. I'll tell you what, this is a very big shot for this young man early in this match. Well, let's see if he throws it as hard as he did and as direct as he did last time. The ball was going so fast and never had a chance to grip the lane, Mike. Oh, man. Oh, oh you're trying for your first title. It's your first time on television. You make a great shot in a pressure situation. The 10-pin just laughs at you. 
Oh. All right, cross lane at the spare. Again, that tremendous ball speed. Biggest game of his life. We talked about, does he have a game plan for it? Uh, I just want to go out and do what I did all week, and that's take it one shot at a time and make good shots. I just want to go out and make 10 good shots tonight and see what the end result is. Sounded like Danny Weisman's plan, and yeah. it was pretty successful for him, for him wasn't right. it? Yeah, for right now, he's made some good shots and hasn't had much to show for it. Four pin, a couple of 10 pins, and now he eases up on the speed and leaves the 3 6 10. Well, and this is not only a, a tough spare, but a crucial spare for him. He can't afford to give anything to Brian Voss. Brian Voss working on three in a row and showing, again, why he's a winner and trying to keep that streak alive. Ten consecutive years with at least one win. At the 3 6 10, and has it. All right. A little smile on his face. Mark Gerbrick and Mark Frank. A couple of marks right there. Mark Gerbrick, the executive director of the Professional Bowlers Association. And Mark Frank, we saw in the interview, the proprietor here, also the proprietor next week. Okay. The only problem Brian Voss has over here is he can't afford to ease up. If he eases up, the ball's going to hook high on him. So he has to keep it firm. Perfect shot. Well, Brian Voss showing the champion that he is. And for you, don't, don't forget, uh, next week it's the Track Synergy Open. Next Friday, 8 o'clock. And it's an arena finals where there's special time energy at the Tri-Cities Coliseum. Be sure to join us for that. It'll be a lot of fun. Synergy energy. That sounds kind of close together, Mike. Right, yeah. There's yeah. definitely a I lot of energy. didn't even stumble over that. I mean, like, that's right. You did good. Brian Voss on four in a row. <laughs> Trying to put this match away. You heard him say, get up. And what he meant by that is, hook some more. Get up and get part of that head pin. And he sees title number 16 right within his grasp. He's got, he's got all the dance steps. You know, he, I don't know where he learned he's, all those. For Barishnikov, I mean, he's got that pirouette right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he has a sense of humor, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. And he's not out of this match yet. He's 44 behind. But... got to stay loose but also get focused here on the left lane he, he can still win if he can get something going if he doesn't strike here the match is basically out of the wood so he needs to strike desperately on the left lane oh, again it just looked like not quite enough speed yeah. well I think you know when he left the 10 pin on the right hand lane back to back I think he felt in his mind that the ball speed was such that the ball was not making the turn into the pocket at the right, right, right point, and that's why he was leaving the solid 10. So he slowed it down a little bit, and he carried it, and then he tried to basically do the same thing on the left lane and just overhooked on him. Well, it's tough. You're going for your first title. You're bowling a Hall of Famer, and the guy's got five in a row in a tough condition, standing in front of the ball return. It's a little intimidating. It's like he's cheating out there. You know, he, <laughs> <laughs> when you're that good, it's not fair, is it? He's not going to relax either. He's working on every shot. Four pin. He'll, even though he wanted to strike, he'll take that. Picks this up. Marks in the ninth frame. The match is over. Big win for Brian Voss. Big disappointment for David Watka. But there are going to be more days for young David Watka. With a talent like that, believe me, you'll see a lot of this young man in the future because he's going to be back. He's got the ability, and he's got the common sense, and he's very, very hard worker. He's intelligent. He'll be back on television. You'll see, see this man in the future many times. Plus, he's going to take home, what, 9,000, 10,000 for second place? Show me that Brian can mark in one of these last two frames. David Watka, by the way, is also, uh, he's sponsored by, he, what he did is he, sell, he sold shares in himself for $1,000 a share, 15 people. So he's going to show a little dividend for the shareholders here. Well, that's fine. Cross lane at the four pin. That basically locks up the match, but Watt could like to uh, strike it out to make uh, Voss show up for the 10th frame. <laughs> well, he's going to show up one way or the other. <laughs> and 
And again, the right through the heart of the pins leaves the 369. <laughs> Dave Watkins disappointed. Tough, tough task ahead of him to beat Brian Voss on a given night like tonight. At the 369. Has to get that back pin. And does. So Brian Voss is going to win title number 16. This is uh, 10 years in a row now, Earl. I'm going to have to start talking right? to him a little uh, bit. <laughs> you might, you might uh, suggest to him here he takes next year off or something. Well, I'm proud of him. Again, as I mentioned, I admire him very much. He's a class guy, and he's, a, he's really the kind of guy the PBA should be proud to have as a member. Watka scrambles him up right there. Wants to finish it out at least, get a 200 game. It's going to be a clean game. Both players are clean through nine frames. Watka well, made some tough spares along the way, though, huh, Mike? Yeah, you get those sevens, you know, they're, they're good at the dice table, but not so good in bowling. Huh? And just never can put two together. Leaves the 2-8. Makes a comment to his wife that she can, or not his wife, his mother, <laughs> that she can go shoot that. Well, Kathy might have uh, given Brian a pretty good match herself, huh? I'm sure she would have. So he misses the 2A, finishes with 191. Give his baptism of fire, bowling for the title against the Hall of Famer. Brian Voss looking to finish it out. Three strikes. We'll give him 247. Goes right back to, to work in front of that ball return. And flushes one more strike. Who wants it? Who wants it? it? Throws the rosin bag. We'll be back to talk to our champion after this. Don't go away. You stay with us as Brian Boss is the Oregon Open winner. When we started a family, we moved out of the city and into a small town. Two kids later, we moved over to Taurus. It meets all of my safety concerns, plus it's roomier and it costs less than the imports. So for me, it really wasn't a choice between imports. It was a choice of what's important. Your Ford dealers, the German one. Now with $600 cash back, Taurus is priced less than last year. Or get 4.8 financing. Plymouth's Clever Idea Department has been on a roll lately. The next challenge? Come up with clever ways to save. Now get a great lease on the redesigned Plymouth Voyager. Choose your savings on Plymouth Neon. Or even get this tantalizing introductory price on the all-new Plymouth Breeze. Oh, and they even name the event. Aren't they clever? Did he accept the money before the tournament? Because if he did, they're going to have to forfeit the championship. Have You've got the documentation. I need it tonight. This is our lead story. Deadline. I know Tyson is fighting where, and I know Tyson is fighting when, but I need to know who that next opponent's going to be. And we're looking at the series. Well, guys, guys. What do you like better, hurt me or spank me? Spank me. Spank me. Perfect. Okay, well, listen, well, this is extremely important. If you can get it it's to me tonight, get I can I get this it. on tonight. And they love you here in Portland, Oregon. Well, the streak is still alive. Uh, the streak is, is definitely still alive. Before I say anything, uh, it's my six-year anniversary in two days, uh, so my wife's watching. Uh, go, and go ahead and buy yourself something, honey. I know, I know you're watching. Um, I just love coming here. Mark Frank is uh, probably, he, we, we can't call him Captain Host because he's just, uh, he does everything for the players. He's really one of the guys. Um, and Mark puts on a great tournament, and I look forward to coming back. Well, he's putting on another great tournament next week. Oh, he sure is. We've got the Arena Finals. Um, uh, I get to stay with him again two weeks in a row. Freebie. Yeah, maybe you'll win uh, next week. Nice to win in front of family tonight. That's right. Uh, I was real pleased. My sisters, uh, they were in Seattle for a couple of days, and they drove down. Got stuck in traffic and almost didn't make it, but uh, uh, I'm sure happy that they were here to see this. Well, we want to offer our congratulations to you. Thank you so much for being us. 
Stay with us. Mike Durbin for Earl Anthony saying so long from Portland, Oregon. Be sure to join us next week for the Track Synergy Open. And stay tuned for NPC Women's Bodybuilding.